Hello everyone, I'm Justin and this is the MCU's original Thor versus the MCU's new Thor. Real quick, if you're watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to know any time we upload a new video. With the release of Thor Love and Thunder, Chris Hemsworth has become the first actor to be in the titular role of four different movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And over the course of those four movies, the character of Thor has probably had the greatest change out of anyone in the MCU. And that change is mostly attributed to Taika Waititi coming on as director of Thor Ragnarok back in 2017. But what exactly did he change, and was it really for the better? Well today I'll try my best to answer that question as we take a closer look at the character of Thor and whether this new version since 2017 is really better than the original version we see through phases 1 and 2 of the MCU. Thor we meet at the end of the first Thor film is basically the Thor we see for the entirety of his original four movie stint in the MCU. And to put it simply, him as a character was pretty dull and boring. He had a very solid arc to begin with though, with his initially brash behavior and arrogance ultimately leading to him being stripped of his powers and banished to Earth where he meets and quickly falls in love with Jane, who teaches him humility and selflessness and after sacrificing himself for his newfound love, he proves he's once again worthy to wield the power of Thor and looks to protect the Nine Realms from war rather than seeking it out. It seems after this initial arc though, that they didn't really know what else they wanted to get out about the character, so he remains almost unchanged by the end of Age of Ultron. I still enjoy this version of the character for sure, but I think dull and boring is still an apt description for him, due to him not having any distinct character traits that stood out, other than him being a very powerful being that cared a lot about the people he loved and who was cocky in battle. But that's about it. Now while I think the original version of Thor took itself a little too seriously, ever since Ragnarok they've chosen to expand on the absurdity of the character, allowing us to see more personality come out of him, as well as more variety in Chris Hemsworth's acting abilities. Now I know there's some people that think the added humor to the Thor films is a negative, and at some points it has maybe leaned too far on the side of comedy, but I strongly see the humor overall as a positive. His more bubbly and humorous personality has allowed us to empathize and relate more to the character, which in turn helps the dramatic moments hit harder. And with this greater emphasis on who Thor is, we've been able to witness a greater journey for the character as well, with him finally realizing the heights of his power in Ragnarok after the loss of his father and his hammer before suffering even greater loss in Infinity War that fuels him with rage and vengeance but his arrogance once again proves to be catastrophic, and all the loss around him causes him to lose himself until he's eventually able to once again realize his power and make up for his past mistake in Endgame. And we then get to see him discover who he is and who he wants to be in Love and Thunder. So with the added depth to his character and a more intriguing journey, I'd give this one to the new Thor. A lot of the side characters from the beginning of Thor's MCU journey mostly stick around in his later installments. And while I think they were mostly pretty strong characters from the beginning, there were some that were in need of improvement that got it in the later Thor films, and the biggest and most obvious improvement to me would have to be Jane Foster, who wasn't given much to work with and was mostly used as a plot device before Thor Love and Thunder, where she really became her own character worthy of her own story and arc. I still enjoyed Jane in her original form though, and I think Natalie Portman worked well in the role, but Love and Thunder really did a great job of using the best things from her original character and getting rid of most of the negatives. There were some great characters introduced in the first Thor though, that were just great as they were, specifically Dr. Selvig, Heimdall, Lady Sif, his father Odin, Mother Frigga, and brother Loki, who I'll talk more about a bit later. And I feel this group of side characters is probably the best part of the first two Thor movies, and really those film's struggles when it came to characters were its main character and his main love interest. So putting their major improvements together with the introduction of two new and extremely enjoyable side characters in Korg and Valkyrie, as well as the continued strength of the already previously strong side characters, I'd have to give this one to the new Thor as well. <laughs> the 
the first Thor introduces a villain who's still to me a top three villain in the MCU, with that villain being Loki, who was not only incredible in that film, but in the first Avengers movie as well. I think Loki has one of the best motivations of anyone in the MCU to act the way he does, which is what makes it so easy to empathize with him. And that paired with the incredible acting of Tom Hiddleston allowed Loki to be the most enjoyable character of the first couple Thor movies, with him easily being more enjoyable than Thor in his original form. But although Thor started with one of the best villains in the entire MCU, Thor the Dark World's Malekith is probably one of the worst villains in the entire MCU. Malekith was just so boring and his character had almost no depth, with his motive just being to bring the galaxy to darkness, and it doesn't help that his battle with Thor at the end of the film was also one of the worst in the MCU. Following Malekith though, we were given another great villain from Odin's family tree in Hela, whose powers were demonstrated just as well as any other MCU villain making her appear unbeatable from start to finish. That scene of her destroying Mjolnir in particular is one of the best yet simplest showcases of power of any Marvel film I've seen. And not only was she showcased to be just as powerful, if not more powerful than Thor, but her incorporation into the origins of Asgard's rise to prominence were very well pieced together and helped give her an interesting motive that paired well with Thor's arc in that film. And following his victories over Hela and Thanos, Thor was faced against Gore the God Butcher, played by one of my favorite actors of all time, Kristen Bale, who was once again great in this role. I wouldn't say Gore was on the level of Loki or Hela, but he's really not too far off and was one of the easiest Marvel villains to empathize with, while still being one of the most frightening. His origins, his fight scenes, and his story arc were great, and his character and his character's actions greatly benefited Thor and Jane's arcs. So although Thor has three of the best villains the MCU has to offer, he also has one of the absolute worst. And with Malekith being part of Thor's original incarnation, I'd have to give this one to the new Thor. Thor's had plenty of great and memorable scenes over his entire run in the MCU so far, but I've narrowed them down to just five, starting with his sacrifice against Loki and the Destroyer in Thor that proved him worthy to wield Mjolnir once again. This was probably the most memorable moment for him though from this point till Age of Ultron, with the closest to it being his battle against the Hulk during the Avengers in 2012. That was an incredible sequence, although it was short, but we later got another battle between the two not too many years later in Ragnarok. And while I'd say that battle was probably the better of the two, the first one was definitely more memorable and impactful to the MCU. Another great moment moment from Ragnarok is of course the moment he realizes his full potential as the God of Thunder and has that awesome entrance into his battle against Hela's army backed by Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song. I definitely say that's a top 3 Thor moment with the other members of that top 3 taking place in Avengers Infinity War with him first absorbing the full blast of a literal star to create his new weapon Stormbreaker before then immediately following that with an incredible entrance this time in Wakanda during a battle against Thanos' army. There's a few more memorable Thor related moments in between and after those I've listed but this is definitely my top 5 and as you can see a majority of my picks took place during Thor's 2017 to 2022 era, so I'd once again have to give this one to the new Thor. And that gives the new Thor the 4-0 sweep over the old Thor, making new Thor your winner. But let us know in the comments below if you'd answer the question of which was better differently. And if you enjoyed our take on the new Thor versus the old Thor, then make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also, make sure to let us know in the comments what other movies, shows, or characters you'd like to see us pit against each other to figure out which was better. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.